Hey y'all, this is Eub and today we're gonna understand cross-site scripting. You know that hackers are always looking for ways to exploit web applications and take advantage of sensitive data, right? Both servers and clients are targets for hackers and can be exploited in many ways. If your web server is secure, the target will be the client, mainly web application front-ends and mobile apps. There are many ways a vulnerable web app can be compromised and the complexity of modern browsers and web applications gives as much flexibility to hackers to exploit systems as it provides functionalities and features. Kareem bought something online and wanted to submit a review of the product and rate it. When he was writing the review, he wanted to list the pros and cons of the product. And because he's a web developer, he tried to use the HTML listing tag to neatly list what he thought was good and bad about the product. Seems great. When he submits the review, the text looked like this. It looks like the form accepts raw HTML and renders it really well. The review is submitted and everyone can see it publicly. The next day, a novice hacker was trying to find a way to get into this website and steal clients' data, and he came across Kareem's review. He was like, wait a sec, the review form has no feature of including lists. This comment must have used raw HTML to do that. To test his theory, he submitted a review that looked like this, and to his heart's content, his theory proved right. Aha, this is my way to get into this website. If this submission accepts raw HTML and renders it, then it could accept the script tag, and that means JavaScript code. And if you are a web developer, you already know what you can do with JavaScript on the web. Pretty much everything. What's even worse, for the app users of course, not for the hacker, is that reviews are submitted to the database. And these reviews are displayed to everyone who visits the website. And by the way, if the hacker submits a review with JavaScript code injected using the script tag, the code inside will not appear in the review. So there is no way we can detect that there is JavaScript code injected into this page unless we scan the database. This means the script will be stored on the server side and gets executed for every user who sees the product. Users who have their credentials and sensitive data stored in the browser and have active sessions. Well, this is not a good story, to be honest. Injection attacks are one way to penetrate vulnerable systems and websites whereby an attacker injects or interpolates external code into an application in order to gain control, get sensitive data, or perform a malicious action. Injection attacks vary depending on what part of the system we're trying to compromise. You might have heard about SQL injection. This type of attack targets websites that use an underlying SQL database and try to construct malicious SQL queries that exploit the database vulnerabilities. In this type of attack, the hacker will take advantage of the application backend that insecurely constructs SQL statements that are defined by user input. For example, when you're using a search engine, there is a good chance what you write in the search input will take part in a database query. So the hacker will use these inputs to pass malicious queries that will perform undesired actions against the database. This is a server-side injection attack. And there are other types of injections, but in this video, we will take a closer look into a specific type of client-side injection attack. It's called cross-site scripting. This is one of the most common and dangerous attacks on the server side. Great. E-gangsters, that was just another way to say hackers. I'm not good at coming up with new words, am I? No? Thank you. Hackers are always looking for ways to inject malicious JavaScript into users' browsers. And you might ask why. They do that for fun. They like to tease developers and users. <laughs> Seriously, if you don't know what's in it for them, I'll tell you. After all, you are a Neanderthal and I'm here to help you. All right, attackers inject code in the client side to hijack sessions. They could steal your session tokens, cookies, etc., and impersonate you and consequently gain control over your personal data and perform actions that only you can perform. They could steal large volumes of users' data and use it for their own benefit or sell it in black markets. Generally, they could do serious damage to web apps and users as well. By having an opportunity to execute JavaScript in your browser, they could have access to pretty much everything your browser stores and manages. They even could rewrite entire pages you visit, which is called website defacement. Essentially, a cross-site scripting attack happens when the e-gangster finds a way to let the browser execute JavaScript code. It allows the attacker to circumvent the same origin policy we talked about in the last video. And as we've seen in the story, an injection attack is possible because there are many ways website users can send dynamic data to application backends and frontends as well. 
The problem is the browser is a JavaScript junkie. Whenever it receives JavaScript code, it has this irresistible impulse to execute it. And channels through which you can send JavaScript code to the browser are diverse, especially with modern web apps. So attackers craft scripts to read sensitive data and even send it to malicious servers or use it to gain privileged access to private systems. All right, now let's go a little deeper and see how this works and what measures we can take to protect ourselves and users against it. Generally, cross-site scripting attacks could happen in three ways. First, through stored cross-site scripting attacks. Second, reflected attacks. The third way is called DOM-based attacks. And there is this new and modern one, which is called mutation-based attack. All right, let's start with the first one, the stored cross-site scripting attack. The sad story we started with is a good example of stored attacks. Hackers essentially find a way through forms and input fields that store data in the database and displays it back to users, such as comments, posts, uploads, etc. And through this input, they send a script to the back end of the app. The script won't do anything there. Its actual job is in the client. So whenever the website needs the value that the script was injected into, the script goes to the client and gets executed. And for this type of threats, first, we should never allow raw HTML that comes from user input to be rendered. Put simply, escape HTML characters. For dynamic content coming from the database, always convert HTML control characters into their corresponding entity encoding. Modern templating engines escape HTML characters by default unless explicitly changed, but it never hurts to make sure. Another way you could prevent this is to use a content security policy. This will help you choose how to block the execution of JavaScript on the client side of your web app. This will put hackers in a really difficult situation. Sweet. Cross-site scripting attacks are possible because sending and executing JavaScript in the browser is easier. By using the content security policy HTTP header in the response, you tell the browser to never execute inline JavaScript, or you can choose the type and origin of the resource you want to block. You can think of the content security policy as an advanced same origin policy. And of course, you can implement the content security policy using the HTML meta tag as well. Okay, so let's move to the second type. And by the way, for stored cross-site scripting attacks, regularly scanning your database for injected scripts from the client side is critical to make sure you're clean. All right, second type of cross-site scripting attacks is called reflected attacks. If you understand stored attacks, then you're halfway into understanding this type. In stored attacks, the script gets sent to the server via HTTP and called back when requested. Then it gets executed. A reflexed attack does not go to the server. The hacker finds a way to inject a script through an input field or in another value that the browser displays back immediately in the browser. Best example is when the page displays some value in the request. For instance, like when you type a phrase or word in Google search and the phrase gets displayed back in the browser. This is not the only way though. The attacker could create a malicious link that includes the script in the URL. And when you click the link, the URL gets reflected into the DOM and the script gets executed. The degree of damage is less than the stored attack, of course, because this often affects one user, but in terms of detection, it's harder than the stored attack. And as a protection measure, escaping dynamic content from HTTP requests is of vital importance to eliminate or at least mitigate the damage of reflected attacks. All right, next XSS attack is called DOM cross-site scripting attack. This type of attack became prevalent with the advent of rich front-end applications. Single-page applications used DOM in a very dynamic and complicated way, and that's the detecting this type of attack is more difficult than the previous ones because it requires deep knowledge of the DOM inner workings. DOM attacks makes use of the URI fragment to pass malicious code like this. Again, the best way to protect against this attack is to escape dynamic content in URI fragments. And finally, we have mutation-based attacks, which is a new category of cross-site scripting. This is the hardest so far, both in terms of creation and protection. Basically, the idea is to generate code that will be clean before bypassing XSS filters, then the code will change by adding or concatenating a portion of code that will turn it into the malicious code that will perform the damage. This way, the attacker could bypass security measures and actually do the damage. So that's it for the four types of cross-site scripting attacks and the ways how to protect against these 
threats and of course server-side scanning and client-side testing for cross-site scripting vulnerabilities is common and really important that is if you want to protect against XSS threats right do you I'm just gonna guess that you said yes, in which case you may check the description for external resources to guide you to understand more and eliminate cross-site scripting threats. And you might want to check other threats and types of attacks such as CSERF, session hijacking, etc. as a next step to protect yourself and your users on the web. Sweet. Well, thank you for your interest in making the web a safer place. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Don't forget to leave me a comment if you have a question or suggestion or anything. And of course, you can like and subscribe as well to show your appreciation. That is if you want to. And till the next video, stay fine and stay tuned.